turning down the request. I think what I want to say about this. Uh, poem was written in 1888, Casey at the bat. Um, the author Ernst, Ernest Lawrence Thayer had just graduated from Harvard. A friend of his, a fellow graduate, had just been given control as a very young man of the San Francisco Examiner. And this guy asked, the author of this to come out and write puff pieces. I'll call them puff pieces for him. So he travels out there and uh, um, August 14th, 1888, puts this poem in the paper and doesn't think anything of it, but two actors in New York, some weeks, days later, when the paper finally got there and they're reading it, and the guy takes it out, stick, sticks it in his lapel, and uh, these two guys uh, made this poem famous. They were named Digby Bell and, and D. Wolf Hopper. Names you couldn't, that's not like a, a Dickens play. Casey at the bat. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville nine that day. The score stood two to four with but one inning more to play. And then when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, Sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go, leaving there the rest who clung to hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought if only Casey could but get a whack at that, they'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey as did also Jimmy Blake, and the former was a Lulu, and the latter was a cake. So upon the stricken multitude, grim melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single, to the wonderment of all. And Blake, though much despised, he tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted, and all saw what had occurred. There was Jimmy saying the second, and Flynn a hug and third. And from five thousand throats and more, there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled in the valley, it knocked upon the mountains, and recoiled upon the flat for Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when, responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his cap, no stranger in the crowd could doubt. It was Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt, five thousand tongues applaud him as he wiped them on the shirt. Then while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed in Casey's eye, a sneer curled Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered sphere came hurtling through the air, and Casey stood a-watching it in haughty grandeur there, close by the sturdy batsman. The ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people, there went up a muffled roar like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him, kill the umpire, shouted someone in the stands. And it's likely they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult. 
He bade the game go on. He singled to the pitcher and once more the spheroid flew. But Casey still ignored it and the umpire said, Strike two! Fraud! cried bad thousands. And echo added fraud. But one scornful look from Casey and the audience was awed. They saw his face go stern and cold. They saw his muscle strain and they knew that Casey wouldn't let the ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lips. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence, his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go, and now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere and somewhere hearts are light and somewhere men are laughing and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. <laughs> Why are you? <laughs>